Well, if the motion is going to be equally well described by simple harmonic motion or a projection of a circular motion, we must have that our simple harmonic motion description, a sine omega t plus phi zero, must be equal to a projection of circular motion description, which is a cosine of omega t plus alpha. But now we can use this relationship that we have here in order to convert this cosine into a sine. So we have a sine of omega t plus alpha plus pi over 2. So now we've got sines on both sides and if we compare what we have in each of the brackets we can conclude that we must have that phi 0 is equal to alpha plus pi over 2. And so we can see that really and we said this right at the beginning, you could describe simple harmonic motion using a cosine. We just happen to choose sine, but you could convert it immediately into a cosine by using this over here. And similarly, if you decided to instead um, describe your simple harmonic motion using cosine, you could convert it back into a sinusoid. They work the same. Okay. So you might just say, well, is there a difference, sine or cosine? Um, it turns out that if you carry on in later physics courses, it's going to be a little more useful to use the cosine interpretation. Why did we use sine? Well, because that's the way it's traditionally taught. Um, and it's good to see both and to understand that they really are equivalent. It's just later on it happens to be a little more useful to be using cosine, but it doesn't really matter. So thinking of things that exhibit simple harmonic motion, um, a pendulum, like a swing set, can be considered an oscillating body. So we've got um, a pendulum that has a certain length L, and the angle that it makes with the vertical is some theta of t. There's a little mass sitting on the end of our pendulum of mass m, and of course it has gravity and there's tension. And you, you know very well that if you let a pendulum go, it'll start swinging. And it swings from one height to the same height opposite through an equilibrium point. So it's definitely doing simple harmonic motion. But there also are a whole bunch of the physics that you've been doing up until now involved because there's gravity and there's tension and there's forces and stuff. So here is a challenge for you. To make a pendulum of 0.25 meters long swing with a period of once every three seconds, how strong should the gravity be locally? Okay, so for this question, um, we're assuming that we know the length of the string holding the pendulum and we know how long it's going to take to swing all the way to one side and back again. It's going to take three seconds to do that complete trip. And the question that we're asking is, what's the gravity of this planet on which this experiment is taking place? So take a break and see if you can figure that out. Afterwards, we'll come back and finish off the last bit of the lecture.